evening or uh, good afternoon or whatever it is where you are this is uh, James of Twin Peaks Coffee Time just uh, checking in just to do a brief video um, this video is mainly um, you know it's unfortunate to have to uh, say this but um, we're gonna do like a, a fundraiser so I appreciate anyone who tunes in for this. Um, greetings, Anna, and also to Jamie. Um, this is something I've discussed with a few people. Um, I thought of basically doing a fundraiser for Voltaire's um, proposed film project, which would be called, potentially, Coffee and Donuts. Uh, Donuts is actually a uh, brand from Nottingham, uh, hence the knots. And they make, um, you know, donuts, obviously. <laughs> um, the original idea would be um, obviously Voltaire's concept is um, a English detective or some sort of uh, basically a detective would go over to um, LA uh, that kind of area and California and be in a sort of obviously completely different um, to sort of rainy England and all that kind of thing uh, environment um, and be buddies best buddies or whatever with a LA cop who's actually associated somehow with the name coffee, uh, maybe spelt K-O-F-F-E-E -E or something like that, or coffee like uh, K-O-F-F-Y maybe, but maybe, uh, you know, it would be more just a nickname uh, in inverted commas, you know. So, but this is all the sort of thing which would be decided probably once the actual film was made um and my idea was to raise money for the acting classes uh, that are being held by um gary hirschberg and cheryl lee the acting master classes um yeah coffee and donuts basically is the original title uh maybe best to keep it as simple as possible but um, we'll see you know i mean i'm not i'm not suggesting to anybody that the film could be some um breakout uh vhs or you know box office hit on any level uh but and i'm not trying to get money people to give money for a film particularly uh when you know right now obviously it's only something which is just you know a pipe dream as such but i think to raise money for me to be able to attend the acting masterclass of uh Gary Hirschberger and Cheryl Lee would prepare me for the role of the LA, uh, well, you know, going to LA as the English detective, maybe a, um, maybe an English detective who's been made redundant or something like this or left the force in uh, disgrace. So, you know, um, I think I could do that role quite well. Someone who's a bit down on his look, but, you know, looking for opportunities and going to LA, et cetera, uh, would be that opportunity. Whether, of course, I mean, it could lead to a few hijinks along the way. But, um, you know, I have a few script ideas, but um, I would leave it mainly with Voltaire initially and his uh, penmanship, et cetera, because he says he's already written a 200-page script so, you know, here's a picture anyway of the um, the acting masterclass. As you can see, there's uh, Gary Hirschberg and Cheryl Lee there in the background, and uh, some Twin Peaks fans mainly, I think, uh, sort of, you know, obviously going for the acting masterclass um 
the idea, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't certainly try and make any sort of Twin Peaks fan film crossover in, into that territory, but I think it would be only natural to try and at least homage or sort of uh, pay, uh, at least give some sort of uh, nod in that direction, since Twin Peaks is such an obvious influence. Um, on everybody at Twin Peaks Coffee Time, but you know me in terms of uh, its style, and in many ways, I suppose. But um, yeah, and it's uh, it's pretty much up in the air right now. But that doesn't mean it won't happen. So um, I think uh, you know to start raising money just for the film right now would be a bit early, but on the other hand, uh, I will leave it up to people in the chat, etc. And you know what you think, basically, because it's it's not going to be just about one single person being involved. I would you know like everybody to be involved, really. Um, ideally, um, anyway, I'll just have to address some of the questions or comments etc in the chat right now i apologize if i'm a bit slow but uh what's going on well, anyway the in the chat right now. Um, <coughs> oh, pardon me. Sorry. Let me just turn Facebook off. It's just too much of a distraction. Um, as Voltaire is explaining, uh, Charles T. Coffee is an uptight plate by the rules English detective on loan from Scotland Yard. Um, well, what? anyway, um, Tony Donetti, Donuts nickname, is a loose cannon, plays by his own rules, um, LA cop. So yeah, um, Voltaire says this is touching. Uh, okay, um, Matthias Franco says Southland is the best cop show ever made. Uh, just putting that out there. I don't know what Jamie is saying. I'm at work, so he's on mute. Um, Is he coming out, given that it's National Coming Out Day? No, I'm not actually, this is not me coming out on this video, Matthias, but thanks for the info on that. And I, uh, you know, obviously stand by and uh, I'm in so solidarity with anyone coming out today, it, which is a very hard thing for people to do, I understand, in some places particularly. So you know, some uh, locations, I mean, where people may not be very, uh, you know, empathetic or stuck in their ways, etc. So many different things, you know, the political, the, uh, sorry, religious heartlands and all that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I don't want to turn that kind of thing into a joke, even though uh, you are saying that I was coming out, but I'm not actually coming out. I will... Uh, just confirm that. Um, Jamie says, at Matthias Franco, he's talking about Voltaire's movie idea and wanting to play the English police officer. Well, we've still not really, you know, got a proper idea of what whether I would be playing an English police officer, a detective, uh, in, I mean, a detective police officer. A detective is different to a police officer, of course, but... Um, I like the idea more of a private eye type of person, but I mean, 
I think within Scotland Yard, if he's from that, you know, then he, I suppose there's going to be my accent and things like that, you know, that stands in the way. So I thought he would be more of a, you know, Midlands, East Midlands type of police officer, not from Scotland Yard, but I'd have to talk to Voltaire about this. He's got his own ideas, you know, uh, and I don't want to trample on his ideas because, um, you know, he gets quite volatile uh, and, well, maybe volatile is a, a wrong word, but temperamental is the word. Like last time I said to him, you know, about any changes in the script, he just faxed me, um, you know, a picture of like basically um, saying, you know, that I was sacked from the project because of my comments and then sent me also a picture of himself eating some baked beans. I don't know what that was about, but anyway. Uh, Voltaire says, I don't take notes. Get it? Well, you know, that's exact, that is exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, I mean, this is probably what it must be like for Lynch and Frost uh, writing, you know, uh, Twin Peaks now, uh, which I think is happening. And, um, you know, whilst obviously I think that's, great that if they are going to carry on Twin Peaks, I would like them to do it in a uh, good natured way, you know, not have not be sort of um, having bust ups or things and sort of having some kind of, uh, you know, res wrestling matches or anything. <clears throat> Matthias says he's got that cop vibe. Um, Willie May Price the third says everyone wanted a new season so badly and the rumors flew really wish Kyle or David would just come out and tell us what is going on uh, okay well yeah I mean about the whole rumor mill and everything to do with that I would say that um, it seems pretty apparent that they don't want to basically quash any rumors but at the same time, they, they clearly don't want to say, uh, give, you know, a comment on any, on any of it for, for whatever reason. And I, I can only imagine that that is to do with um, the legality of things, etc., with Showtime. So, like, if they were definitely not making any more Twin Peaks, I think by this point, uh, somebody from Showtime uh, and or producers of Twin Peaks, etc. You know, everybody knows Sabrina Sutherland, who the executive producer who worked on Twin Peaks The Return, would have at least said, this is just all um, not happening. And, you know, this horror museum is just sort of, uh, you know, Brit stoking rumors which aren't true. But nobody said that. Um, you know, even Kimmy Robinson made comments saying, oh, I think it's all just uh, some sort of trivial stuff that the, the horror museum's making and saying, you know, no, it's not true. But then she amended her comment from saying, no, it, it's not true to something to somebody instead of, and then she just put no comment. She changed the response on on some, uh, on her Facebook, I think. But um, not like Kimmy Robinson is some kind of major uh, representative for Lynch, Frost, and Showtime, but um, and you know, on top of that, you've got to bear in mind the amount of uh, flat out misdirection, etc., that Jen Lynch, for instance, gave when season three was definitely in production, well, you know, in pre production and had been even written somewhat. And so, really, you can't really go on anything uh, reported online in especially social media, et cetera. I don't think it's really very reliable. Um, in terms of the actual sources online, you know, the people say, oh, well, it's not been picked up by any uh, major news um, groups, et cetera. You know, like, it's not been picked up by um, a massive film, you know, Hollywood Reporter or something, as uh, as far as I'm aware, or IMDb, which was happening once Twin Peaks was officially announced back in um, five years ago. 
or whenever, you know, and then when it was, I mean, it was off, then it was on, etc. That, But that was all officially reported, whereas this now is not, like, official for one thing. Second of all, um, no big a, a, a deal is going to ever be made about this, as with the return, I don't think. I think it's just... Um, I think it would be prove somewhat difficult to try and re prize the sort of the level of um interest from the media. I'm not talking about from the fans. I think that with the fans the interest could even be more in some ways now, once now that the return has been on there and people want to see what happens next in a way. I think there's an interest there. Uh but I think within the media I think it would prove quite difficult to uh, you know, generate the sort of hype machine or whatever you want to call it, which in a way I think social media managed to play a big part in anyway, you know, especially when, for instance, with, you know, Bring Back Twin Peaks, etc., which Joe started, Joe Powers, and then I was involved in with all those missing Cooper posters. And now there's things like missing Laura posters. Somebody's made one of those, like a Photoshop. I don't know who made it, whether that's even from Showtime or something, but, um, you know, I think it would be uh, a little bit naive to think that Showtime's marketing department is not aware of the whole missing Cooper thing uh, when, you know, you can buy actual T-shirts online that people have just made, you know, with no, they just use the image and there's no permission granted or there's no copyright on it anyway. So, um, but you know, the missing Laura thing was done before that anyway, because they used that about 10 years ago for the promotion or even longer than that, actually, I think it was for the, for the gold box set whenever that came out and they had missing uh, posters on phone boxes in this country for that, which was, I thought was a bizarre, um, A, bit, a bizarre way of um, advertising uh, the the gold box set, and you know it makes me wonder almost whether there, there was some weird idea at some point of, of trying to reprise Twin Peaks after the gold box and this idea of of Laura being missing somehow. But I, I don't really think that that was the idea. I think it was just some sort of loose idea that the Laura missing poster. You know, I don't know like before she's found you know in the pilot which which is just sort of making it making an idea out of nothing really which, but you know they do that kind of thing just to promote something it doesn't mean there's any real thought gone into it in terms of stories or anything so jamie says does voltaire's movie have a crude yet gorgeous and lovable hooker role <sighs> Um, I don't know about that. I mean, he says he doesn't take notes uh, yet. If he's not written a script by this point, you know, that's pathetic. So I would have expected him to be, you know, writing it nonstop. Um, Matthias, we love a Frank, sorry, we love a hooker with a heart of gold. What is up with the light, James? Uh, Jamie says, Pazuzu. I don't know. It could be Pazuzu, I think. I just hope, you know, I just hope that nothing else happens to it. Um, so, what? Um, this, this is more like something out of um, Suspiria. Matthias says, something tells me Voltaire's movie idea wouldn't pass the Bechdel type test. Um, well, I don't know what the Bechdel test is, but you'll have to uh, tell me about that. Jamie says, Matthias seems like an essential addition to any crazy cop movie. Um, and Matthias replies, I could be wrong there, obviously, about the Bechdel test. Voltaire confirms, I have written a scene specifically satisfying the Bechdel test. So that's 
pleasing. But um, but earlier you said you didn't write notes. You say, I mean, you have written the script, but you've not taken notes from anybody else, including me. Right. Um, Nathan says, I assume Voltaire will play the wheel wheelchair bound ex lawyer who lost his license for sleeping with underage Asians. Well, that's terrible. I, I don't think we want that kind of thing in the film. That would be just. Uh, I mean, what on earth, Nathan? What is that? I don't understand what, where you get these ideas from. Um, Eugene, Eugenie Plisco Cuprin says, Hello, for some reason it seems you are very, very upset. Uh, Jamie responds, No, he always looks this way. Well, I'm not. I don't think I look really, really upset or whatever. I don't know what that's all about. Maybe it was the lighting or something, or maybe it's just my face. I don't know. But um, Matthias says, "Really nerve-wracking seeing my name up there and not hearing what James says." I encourage everyone to try it. Hmm. Uh, Jamie asks, is there a subtitle option? I'm not sure about that, but there is on, uh, there's this generated one on uh, uh, YouTube, but it would probably come up with nonsense, so slightly, but it'd probably be maybe more uh, interesting than what I've got to say, maybe, I don't know, so yeah, it's worth looking into. Um Eugenie Plisco Cuprin says, okay, at Jamie. John is who it is. That's obviously John uh, Pilate, who's, uh, who's been on the show before, says, I just want to see what my words look like on the screen. I think it is that, John. I'm sure it is. Um, there's no captions for live video, says Matt Matthias. Jamie says, Newsweek did an article about the Twin Peaks rumours, and I think that Variety did one too. Um, yeah, they did actually. So, it, obviously, it's gone quite wide. I think that it's known of or known that there are rumors about more Twin Peaks. It's not like you know, on the front page of every uh sort of you know website or whatever. But, like I said, I don't really think that they'll be able to regenerate that kind of hype that. The return got, but that, I think in a way, I think that's a good a good thing. Uh, just concentrate on, you know, doing, creating it, and not sort of this idea of trying to, I don't know, do it to a certain date or just, just, you know, I just hope they do what they want, obviously, and just uh, are pleased with whatever they do when when they do it and if they do it and I you know I think that it is uh, obviously something ha has happened somewhat I think they may have filmed some things already but what exactly I have no idea and I don't know what rumors are exactly true you know uh, the potential of two more seasons and a movie or something seems a bit uh, I don't know like optimistic but on the other hand or rash or something but then again we hear that showtime is expanding their whole you know hours or whatever they're putting out as in they need lots more content and not i think that twin peaks is beneficial to them for, for a variety of reasons you know because of international sales and also um sort of just the whole way it's received and you know the popularity i think it's it's quite a popular thing even though it might not get the immediate sort of massive viewing figures or anything like that um but i, I, don't, I don't personally describe it as so much as a niche thing it's more just a uh, cult show you know and uh its popularity is probably something that varies you know 
uh, and, and like I've, you know, I've said for a long time, or ever since really even season three was on, I think if they did continue it beyond uh, the return, I think that it would change in, in its overall style, just as the original show did. So, no, I've not watched the Breaking Bad movie, Matthias. I don't know if anyone else has, but... Um, I watched the show only once when it aired, and it feels like so long ago. I'm kind of that not that invested in it, even though I love Jesse so much. Um, Jamie responds, "Not yet tonight. I will. Sorry, I still have three more episodes in the show before I am finished. I wanted the Ozymandias episode last night. Holy moly, intense episode." Sveen Lagomir says. If Lynch Frost were to make another season, someone should have the guts to tell them season three was a SHIT. Well, you know, I think with that kind of thing, it's that kind of a uh, critique of the show. I'm sure that they are fully aware that there are some people who didn't like uh, the return or, you know, aspects of it. It's not like, I don't think they live in some kind of... Um, cocoon or something where they just go around thinking uh the return was you know their best work ever with their heads held held high held high and like thinking uh this is our greatest achievement ever we may as well just give up and that's it leave it we've done the best thing ever i think that they liked the experience of making the return i think they were enthusiastic about it I think they really loved many aspects of it, but whether they feel like, you know, if they feel like they want to continue with it, I'm only happy for that. I'm not I'm not really one to want to just sort of lay into season three and call it uh, shit or something. Because personally, I don't, I mean, I don't agree with that kind of view in that one, I think you're just saying it just to try and be, uh difficult or different but secondly you know you're not you're not being specific enough you need to tell you need to say what exactly you found shit about it um i think the fact that it didn't fulfill expectations is what a lot of people really uh disliked and for that you know i think that's totally understandable in all senses and, and I, you know I'm one of those people in some ways uh, but that doesn't mean that I think that the season was shit or anything it's just that it was different in some ways to what I might have hoped for or wanted you know I mean my sort of view of what is surreal or what is fantastical supernatural etc within Twin Peaks might be slightly different to what David Lynch or Mark Frost think you know and you know i didn't make it i didn't direct it or other directors didn't come in uh would it have benefited from maybe more directors you know i think i think so definitely like the original show but it was very much you know a one director 18 hours and uh i just can't see them doing that again i can't see them making 18 hours with lynch just directing uh I don't have any problem with them trying different directors, but of course I like Lynch's style. And I don't think his style is the reason necessarily why you were criticizing season three, because um, I think it's more to do with the actual script and the content, because it's, uh, you know, the lack of any clear story or um, a story that you're actually interested in, basically um because you know there's only so much that i can find interesting in the mr c and dougie stuff but i think that even kyle you know admitted that there is a lot of likeness to he's supposed to be taken quite as good sort of wrenchingly or whatever as the original show in some ways not all of it anyway there are certain things in it which are uh definitely <laughs> you know have an emotive aspect but i think that some people complain that season three felt cold for instance um and i totally you know i think that they're right 
in many ways. It was different to the original show in many ways. But I don't think that was just by accident. I don't think that Lynch just or Frost, you know, approached it and said, right, we're going to kind of try and recreate the, the original show. And then it just came out like this by accident. So that's more interesting to me to understand why it is like it is rather than sort of just say I didn't like it because obviously I did really like it, you know. It's just it wasn't what I expected in some ways. Hi, John, says Jamie. Uh, <clears throat> Matthias says, uh, James, baby, flash me a smile so I know you're doing okay. Your face is so hard to read without sound. Well, I might smile, but only when I'm actually... Uh, laughing. Well, anyway, everyone in the chat now is talking about um, Skyler and Carmella, Carmella, sorry, and the you know uh, things to do with Sopranos and Breaking Bad, etc. So, um, in the meantime, you know, of course, I am still carrying on with the um, the fundraiser. For Gary Hershberger, Cheryl Lee acting masterclass. So, um, if anyone can advise, you know, the best way of trying to set up a fundraiser for that, and whether you'd be interested, uh, and then that will obviously benefit the pre-production of um, coffee and donuts. So, for the meantime, um, in the meantime, I should say, you know, I hope you uh, are doing well there. Um, if you've got any more questions or anything about Twin Peaks you want to talk about, I'll stay online now. But otherwise, um, the chat has gone a bit quiet now, and I don't I don't really know enough about Breaking Bad or uh, the Sopranos, etc., to really give that much of an opinion. You know. Plisko Krukrin says, I think Lynch will remove something and somewhere in 2020, what will it be? We will find out in the future, but I think it will be a full meter. Uh, what do you mean by a full meter? You mean he'll release something? Oh, um, yeah, I think so. I think, uh, that, you know, it is 20, sorry, 30 years since Twin Peaks first aired in 2020 so it's it would be good timing to at least uh somehow have something to celebrate and in a way continue to peaks in some way uh as a continuing story as they always say you know so yeah on that note i'll just leave this as i said it was just a shorter video and uh hope everybody's all right there um and we will talk again soon of course we'll be back on sunday for the normal show so in the meantime i'll be seeing you in the trees <laughs>